Welcome to Bergen and to the course Cities in Climate and Energy Transformations. I'm Siddharth Sarin. I work on transitions to sustainable uh, energy futures. And I'm really excited about what we're going to cover over the next while. My name is Hova Horsta. I also work on, on cities and sustainability and I'm really excited about this, this course. Cities are critical to how the world meets its climate and energy challenges. The world is, rap is urbanizing rapidly and what cities are doing will be important to how we solve these, these major uh, issues. And that's what we'll talk about in this course. There's a number of different types of cities and the challenges that come up are of course really vast in range. Even though we're lecturers who are going to take you to many different places and challenges and students on this course are located in many parts of the world, we are based here in the city of Bergen on the western coast of Norway. We're a small city in a global context and yet you see many of the same challenges and issues that come up in this course reflected right here. So we're going to take you to some of them. And we'll start with one of the issues that, uh, where Bergen has uh, gained international recognition, electric vehicles. Bergen is the global frontrunner in electric vehicle adoption. We see cars like this Tesla going around the city and some parts of the year uh, there are more electric cars being sold than fossil fuel vehicles. This of course has to do with the national subsidy scheme where if you, if you purchase a, an electric vehicle, you are exempt from many of the tariffs that, that you have to pay if you, pa if you buy a, a fossil fuel uh, car. It also has to, do, has to do with local incentives. So here in Bergen, uh, electric vehicles can park for free many places or pass into the city center without paying road tolls. Now on the one hand, one could say that people who can afford top-end cars are beneficiaries of this kind of uh, transition but on the other it's also driven global innovation in the automotive sector towards electric vehicles and that has benefits all over the world. The city promotes sustainable mobility in multiple ways. One of the examples is the mobile punkt or the mobility hub that you see here where you can access public transportation, pick up a city bicycle, charge your car or use a shared car. And by doing things like this, the city hopes to reduce car traffic by 20% within 2030. Each shared car can replace eight privately owned cars. These cars are from the car sharing ring, Bildelringen. This was a citizen initiative that was started in the 1990s and it now has more than 2,500 members uh, in the city and it's, it has gone completely digital. So it works like this. At their best, cities are great places to live. And I do love living in Bergen. So do I. And Bergen has done a lot to make its city center attractive for people by stimulating places like this. There has been massive investment from the regional and local authorities in the light rail. And it's worked. There are more than 15 million passenger trips being taken every year. And you pay the same no matter you're taking a 10 minute or 90 minute trip, which is meant to make it egalitarian for people to use. Although some people living in the center might not agree. But these achievements have not been without controversy and conflict. In fact, there has been lots of public opposition to the fact that taxpayers' money and roll tolls are part of financing these uh, measures and, and interventions. Is it fair that suburban drivers who are dependent on their cars should take part in paying for the light rail that they're not using? Is it fair that suburban drivers are paying for bicycle lanes in the city center? From a climate perspective, this makes a lot of sense, but not necessarily to the entire population. Polarization between suburban dwellers and people who live in the city center is a familiar theme in urban studies. We saw this coming to the fore during the municipal elections last year when a lot of this polarization was visible. 
but it's also complex. When the light rail was built, the real estate prices went up along the stops, going well into the suburbs. And now we see new development of another line. And we see the same type of polarization when it comes to compact city strategies. So when the municipality opens up for new housing in central locations like this one, we, uh, we see that the housing prices and these new apartments are typically very high. So only a part of the population can access th this type of housing. And there has not been political willingness to uh, build low income housing here. So as we've seen, the challenges and solutions that are being discussed in cities across the world are also present here in Bergen. Our examples show that urban transformations are political. They're not just technical interventions, not just for experts. They're deeply political. And that's what this course will be about. In the lectures, we're going to take you through some really exciting work that's already been done on how we can approach these challenges, how we can create solutions. But a lot of this course is discussion-based. It's about co-creating these solutions and finding out how we can move towards sustainable urban futures. And we look forward to discussing this with you.